Hello and welcome to my video. Now the picture that you can see on here at the moment is one that uh, I painted with a student. Um, it's a collaboration and um, I didn't make a video. Silly me, eh? So I'm going to make a video. And this is a much bigger board than the one that you, you've just looked at on the screen. Uh, the one you looked at is um, 80 by 60 centimetres, whereas this one is, um, you know, I sh it's typical now, I should have done this before, 60. So uh, it's the same depth, but much wider. It's uh, 120. So um, 80, I'll show you where 80 goes to. So you're, you're seeing the whole thing on the screen. Uh, 80 goes to the end of the ruler there. So in other words, I'm doing that extra bit on the end there. So you get an extra bit free. And uh, it's dramatic. That's what I like about it, obviously. And uh, I'm going to make it even more dramatic, I hope. We'll see how it goes. So the usual colours, do I even need to say what they are? Anyway, so right now, the thing about this picture um, is that it's stark. Now, some people said when I uploaded it that uh, they thought it was a little bit depressing. Um, I don't see this sort of thing as depressing. I see it as sort of um, strong and quite moving. So there we are. There's the start of the painting. This is where you start. OK, so that's roughly the middle. It's not quite the middle. It's a bit off. It's a little bit further that way, but... Uh, it's, as usual, completely flexible. So how much sky are we going to have? How much indeed? Right, I think that's too much. That's too high there. Uh, I'm, going to come, I'm going to come down a little bit on it, so we'll just obliterate that, because it, it doesn't matter that it's there anyway. It's just a mark. I'm going to come down a little bit more. So I'm going to have some land across here. This will have the odd bump in it. And by the way, this this is going to be a long video. It's going to probably be maybe two hours. Can you bear it? I hope so. I can. I mean, I, I uh, always feel well when I do this sort of thing. OK, so there's a bit of land. And guess what colour that is? The usual, you guessed it, it's sap green, red ochre, not a lot else. There's a tiny bit of Payne's grey just to give it a little bit more darkness. I do like a bit of dark. Okay, the hair coming out there already. I was hoping to paint this with music, but of course I can't do that because the copyrights. So don't let's have this stark cliff thing. No, I think we're going to come a little higher a little higher than we did on the other painting. And in fact, I'm going to take that back over to the left a bit. OK, so that's this strange cliff structure there. OK, I think I quite like that position. Like I usually say, if I, you know, if I don't, I'll shift it. But um, at the moment, it's OK. All right, so dark in there, light underneath it. See how that is almost instant? No, you can't. Let's make it a bit more obvious. So dark in here. Move the brush quickly. Lighter underneath. You can actually see that now. So this is my bit of land and this is going to do interesting stuff. It's going to have a little bit of a dip and then it's going to have some hills in the distance there but there's no point putting them in yet until I put the sky in because the sky and the land will work together. I'm going to pull the um, or push the land into the sky once I've started working on it so that the colours mix. Now this cliff thing Do you know, sometimes I say things and I think, what on earth am I talking about? A cliff thing. It's either a cliff or it's a thing. And, and this is going to be a, a sort of cliff type thing. Oh, well. There we go. Dig a, dig a deeper hole, Stuart. Right, so let's have some... 
tones here. It's actually um, quite a simple painting. This is not this is not a complicated one. The the drawing skills that I'm going to use in this probably amount to about I would say a generous zero because I'm not drawing much. I'm just making a few marks and I'm sort of emulating the um, the other painting, keeping it simple. And this is going to have a load of texture in there, which is going to be one of the interesting, I hope, I hope it is anyway, who knows, maybe it's, maybe it's boring as heck, but it's going to have sort of interesting things going on in there, textures and whatnot. And then, of course, the main thing, up all of this here, which is really actually quite big when you get it on the easel, that's going to be sky. So I'm going to have a little fun. Well, a little fun? No, I meant to say a lot of fun with the sky, because I always do. And I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of brown in there. That'll become more evident later when I start sort of wiping paint. Now the thing is, will this will will this take two hours? I've, I've sort of estimated that it'll be two hours, uh, but you know I'm. I'm um, I'm not infallible. Have I, have I got the whole thing in the picture? Yes, I have. It, it may be less than two hours. Um, certainly won't be more anyway. Now this originally this painting was inspired by a dream that I had quite a few years ago, and I kept having this dream kept coming back and then I'd have a few nights with nothing and then this dream would come back and in the dream I'm a, I'm a little tiny character over there and I'm walking up walking up to this cliff and looking straight up and uh, I don't know what the dream was about it's quite a few years ago that I had this but I wondered whether it was symbolizing a point in my life that I had come to and I didn't know what to do and I couldn't move forward because the cliffs, you know? Dream analysis, fascinating stuff. I don't know if there's anyone out there who's into that stuff, but I tend to dream pretty well every night. And um, lately I've been having some really fascinating dreams. Quite often uh, the dream will be me wandering around in a, a building Sometimes the building is a little bit derelict. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, new and uh, clean and sort of spick and span and an interesting place to be. Sometimes it's downright spooky. So, I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling, somebody said, whoever that somebody is, don't remember now, but um, the, if you dream of a building, the building represents you. So the dreamer, in other words, and depending on the state of the building is how you see yourself, which is fascinating, I think. Anyway. So who knows? Now look, there we are. What's happening there? Interesting structure. It looks like, you know, a cliff, a dark cliff with light uh, hitting it over here, uh, you know, on this sort of flat bit of, well, it's not flat, it's going to be sort of scooped down. It's going to be an interesting shape in there, I think, anyway. Um, let's just exaggerate it a bit. Not too bad. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want this dropping down. I never like th things to drop down before they get to the end of the painting. So that will raise up. That will rise up. Do you know, I, I'm doing this all the time. I say words as I'm painting and because my brain it's trying to do two things, well, several things at once. It's trying to paint and it's trying to talk and it's trying to plan a little bit ahead what I might say so that I don't put my foot in it. Like, for instance, somebody asked me on, I think it was either Facebook or YouTube, I can't remember now, uh, what do I think of abstract art? And I, I've decided the best thing for me to say is that I, I don't have an opinion. Um, not sure what I think about abstract art. I mean, there's some I like, some I just really don't like. Uh, it, but you know, to ask a 
I don't, well, how can I put it? I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a dedicated abstract painter. I just love landscape. So what am I going to say about abstract? Am I actually going to give you a, an honest opinion of landscape? I don't know. I mean, it was when I went to college, it was sort of drummed into us. Uh, you know, all the, it, well, you name it, it was drummed. About abstract, we had to go to lectures. It was almost every night, I think. From what I can remember, it never seemed to end. There was always a lecture about something. Uh, and and a, it had a heavy leaning towards abstract. Uh, it just really didn't interest me. Excuse me while I just tear up all these bits of paper. Uh, you all know what I'm going to do with this, so I'm not even going to tell you. I'm just going to... Ah, now there you go, look, see? Think ahead, Stuart. What am I going to tell you? All right, well, all I'm doing is making a smooth bit here for wiping. I want to wipe. I don't want to necessarily add texture at the moment. So I'm going to sort of do a, a quick sort of wipe in a few places along here. Like so, just to exaggerate the top of that uh, cliffy bit. That's the cliffy bit. Um, and uh, yeah, put paint on, take, it, take paint off. What was that film? Wax on, wax off. Kung Fu Kid or something like that. Now that dates me a bit, doesn't it? Okay, so I've got a lot of landscape here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of make it as interesting as I can. And I'm while I'm thinking of making it interesting, I'm also thinking about whether I should just point the camera down a bit. No, I think it's okay. I think it's all right. Um yeah, this is um, very minimal colour. As you can see, there's a little bit of brown over there. Uh, it's actually in all of it, but I just sort of added a little extra bit there. And the taking off of paint is quite acceptable because eventually more paint will go on, unless I completely like what I've done. It doesn't always work, but you know, sometimes it does. Um, but all I'm doing now, okay, slow down, Stewie. Right. What I want to do in there is give a feeling of scale. So to give a feeling of scale, you need little details. So I'm going to make some little details. Now they're not actually details; they are just marks that I, over the years, I, I've sort of come to. Um, no, that's not the word. I've practiced. Okay, I've practiced. I've practiced enough with making textures to give the feeling of foliage and stuff a long way away. So that there, are not, there aren't too many marks in there that are really big. There's, there's a lot of little fussy things like this. Like, for instance, I'll do a, a few touches like that. Then I'll do something else. Like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have one of those. Why not? You know, with a little thing. That's called a thing, a thing on the hill. So let's uh, let's see what that thing is. Okay, what could it be? It could be, um, you know, even though it's quite a hill, there could be farming going on on there in the distance. So let's break it up a bit and let's put a let's put another line there. Could be a path. Who knows? Now, when I was when I was teaching the other day, my student. Uh, Fiona, um, I turned my back for a minute and she added some lines and it really made the picture. I was quite, uh, quite pleased with what she'd done. And it was something, um, well you saw it at the beginning, I'll probably flash it up on the screen again. Down in this area, she just put some scratch marks and I think it was the handle of a brush. She put one coming across there, let's have a wiggly one there and let's have one sort of here, just a hint of something there. Uh, and it sort of it becomes uh, a path in the distance because you don't have to over that distance you don't have to think about detail it's just you know it's just there just something going on in the picture that just attracts the eye enough to say there you go that must be a path 
Okay, now my cliff. Quite often I do um, chalk cliffs. I'm not going to do a chalk cliff on this one. This is going to be a dark cliff. Now, whether I will add colour to it later, at the moment I actually quite like it really dark, funnily enough. Uh, and, you know, minimalist. So let's, let's just carry on with that at the moment. Let's have a, a little bit more light on the top. I've got the sky to come up to it yet, and that will affect the top of the cliff, but just the odd little bit of light, just catching the top there is quite effective. And as, it, as the slope comes down here, there may be a little bit of light just against the dark bits, just to sort of enhance it a little bit, just carefully take off a bit of paint, and you can see probably you know, that's, that's what I took off. You might not be able to see it. Take my word for it, as they say. Now, the, the, there isn't going to be water over there. It's just going to be landscape that disappears into the um, wild blue yonder. And we'll get onto the sky in a minute. But uh, I just want to fiddle with the cliff a little bit more. I didn't go this far with the uh, other painting. I left it quite simple. But I think on this one, I've got a nice light bit there. Got the light catching the face of the cliff. Quite, uh, quite minimalist. I think maybe we'll just uh, let's just have, let's just have a few more, like so. Because if if I don't like them, I'll just remove them. But I want to see what it'll look like. Just a few lines. Get your shoulder out of the way, Davis. Right. Okay, that's sort of interesting. Now. Uh, the thing is, with if you're going to approach a landscape like this, you don't want to do that bright green. None of that um, yellowy, greeny stuff. You know what I mean? Dark is good. There's going to be quite a... well, dark is going to work in this anyway. It's going to be a lot of light sky through there. Now, against a very light sky, this will look dark. The greens will tend to be on the dark side, so uh, don't don't go overboard with the sort of yellow and blue mix. Doesn't always work, and um, uh, trust me, I'm an artist. So, well, I hope I am anyway. Over here, what are we going to do over here? We're going to have all kinds of things happening over here, and I'm going to just sort of leave that probably to the end quite pleased with what's happening over on the right hand side it's simple not too complex um, yeah but anyway as I say no C so if you think you see C you don't see C uh, you just see uh, no C okay that wasn't that easy to say actually now then um, the sky color I've got a little bit of green there it doesn't matter that'll vanish in a minute and um, I'm just wondering what to do. In the original, I had a sort of coppery, bronzy colour. And I'm, I'm actually thinking maybe I'll do that again. I've got, um, let me think, what have I got? Um, right, uh, I'm just fiddling with my palette here a little bit. See what I can, um, see where I can mix some paint. If you could see my palette, you'd understand that last statement. But it is, um, it's interesting. Let's leave it at that. It's interesting. I've got some brushes here that will never work again. Right, so I think, yeah, um, there was a pause there. You won't notice it because I just cut the video for a few seconds. But the sky, down in that corner, I've, I'm thinking of using red ochre. A little bit of red ochre was used on the other painting, but I'm going to use considerably more. Excuse me, all these noises you can hear, that's me just uh, pushing things around on the palette. Let's get that out of the way. Right. Brand new brush. Uh, a little bit of oil. And I'm just thinking to myself, just thinking, thinking out loud, well, thinking quietly out loud, I suppose. Um, what am I going to do? Let's just, I'm going to experiment because I like experimenting. I've got 
red ochre. Hope I'm not repeating myself too much. So what I'm going to do with the red ochre is just chuck it on there. Now you may think, oh, this guy is completely insane. He's putting brown in the sky and what the heck's going on? But, you know, don't worry. Okay, right, now, the cliff, I've sort of got an established line. Now, even though I say I've got an established line, it doesn't mean to say it's there forever. It just means I've got a line there that looks a bit permanent. All I'm going to do is just take some paint up to it like so. Not a lot of paint on here, of course. This is almost just a stain, because what I don't want is a great big quagmire. Lovely word, that. I wonder if you use that in the States. I have to ask my wife, she's an American. Quagmire. Sounds very English. Almost Scottish. I'm going to have to look that one up. So I've just, uh, I just had a student here, delightful chap uh, from England. He's an air ambulance doctor. Um, now he gave me his, few, his, his full title, he's not just like a doctor, I think he's a, uh, he's a trauma specialist, but he's like a consultant trauma doctor, something like that, I'll check that. Um, anyway, he, he was a really nice guy, it's quite, it, one thing I like about teaching is first of all, you never know who you're going to meet uh, until they get here. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it was a, a good laugh. I must, I must say, I haven't laughed like that for a long time. Really nice chat. Very useful to have a doctor around, so I could sort of get a few opinions about my health. It's very encouraging, anyway. And incidentally, for those of you, I don't know, people may not be interested, um, but uh, I was... Um, diagnosed with heart failure um, but I have to say that now I am basically off the drugs I'm beginning to think that I have been over medicated excuse me I've got a I've got a hair uh, over medicated um, strange so anyway I'm, I'm off pretty well everything except uh, beta blockers and um, even those I'm not taking the full dosage because quite frankly it just knocks me out uh, and I've been keeping an eye on my my beaters and they don't seem to be needing any blocking feeling much better too now I'm pretty well drug free so that's all I can say about that and I, in fact I think it um, I don't know maybe you can hear it uh, my voice is a lot stronger than it used to be. It went very weak for a while. Very off-putting. Don't like that. And, um, yeah, it seems to be back to normal. So, let me see. So I've got all this brownie colour here. Well, that looks absolutely dreadful at the moment, but it won't. I'm going to revive it. Now, I'm thinking that I'm going to zoom in. I think I have to. So, if you bear with me a minute, I'll come back when I've zoomed. Okay, top of the cliff, white, quite a lot of white. All I'm going to do is start to push it into the brown, like so, and up to the edge of the cliff. And turn the palette knife around and work the other way. I'd like to be able to actually see what the palette knife is doing and if I do this too much particularly as I'm, I'm trying to get it down to the edge of the, um, the the cliff here doing that is a little bit from my angle is a little bit tricky it's a lot better if I do this I can see everything much clearer or more clearly so there we go there's a load of white there Take that brown colour. Now you can see the brown is changing. It's going into a sort of pinky 
strange sort of colour. Um, and I'm, I'm putting a tiny bit of cadmium yellow in that. Cadmium yellow deep. Well, I think it's deep. Hang on a minute. Let me just check that. Yep. Cadmium yellow deep hue. Uh, which is sort of heading towards orange. It looks quite orange. And um, there it is. Straight out of the tube. Nothing done to it. Now here, I'm going to start to form the face of the cliff. So let's just chuck a load of that there, all the way down the bottom. And as I do this, I'm making the edge of the cliff a little bit um, fuzzy. Don't want it too crisp, because uh, from a distance it will look crisp. It doesn't have to be hyper crisp close up. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it didn't to me either, but I think you might know what I'm talking about. Adding a bit more white now. Because I know, I know that these colours, this red ochre, the yellow and the white all mixed together, it's going to make a nice sort of interesting bronzy, uh, slightly golden colour. All highly flexible. Now, if I was using a brush, I think I would be in uh, dire straits. But because I'm using this, and I'm pushing uh, paint on top of paint, in other words, one colour on top of another colour, but there are, I know that the colours all work together. You see what I mean when I do this? It all turns into something interesting, and it doesn't go, um, it just doesn't go muddy. Which is very important. You do not want mud unless you are painting mud. Okay, that's looking good. So I'm going to carry on with that. Just pull it across and pull it away from the cliff. Like so. Very interesting colour. And um, something to think about. I, you know, you all know by now that I repeat stuff. And I repeat stuff because that's how you learn. I think most of us know that. Repetition drums, drums information into your head. So, uh, Oops. Skies, here's the repetition. Skies don't have to be blue. Clouds don't have to be white. It could be any colour you like, just don't be silly about it. Unless you really want to be silly, then please be silly. Okay, so there we go. We've got, we've got a nice contrast against the uh, hill. And believe me, that will show up more in a minute when I start working up the top here. Because that's going to be um, blue and grey. Blue and grey clouds. The drama aspect. Now if you want to see this sort of landscape, here's, here's something you could do. A lot of people have probably seen the series on Netflix. I don't know whether it's still on Netflix, but you could probably find snippets on uh, YouTube. Pole dark. Pole dark. A story of a Cornish tin miner. Um, was it tin? I don't know whether he was always after tin. Maybe he was after something else as well. But um, I think it was mostly tin. If you go to Cornwall in England, um, you'll see these derelict stone structures um, with chimneys. It's usually one chimney. And then, uh, you know, the stone building. And below those uh, would be the mine shaft. Anyway, Pole Dark was filmed in Cornwall, in England, which is a very pretty part of England. It's where I would want to live if I went to live back in England. 
Um, but you've got to be a you've got to, you've got to be wealthy to go and live in Cornwall now, I think. Anyway, but um, yeah, every now and then in this series, which is very watchable, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it was quite exciting in parts too, and very well acted. But there was this particular scene. There was always every now and then there'd be a, a wagon going along a scene like this, actually. Sea over here, headland. Blah, 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 off goes the wagon. Be another scene with someone walking this way. Be another scene with someone walking that way. And then there'd be someone walking this way, distressed. And then meeting someone, and then them both going back that way. All kinds of stuff. So they probably filmed all that in one go because the weather didn't seem to change that much. And this is England we're talking about, so, you know, that's not going to be accurate. The weather changes every five minutes. Anyway, so what I'm trying to get at is that the, the type of scene uh, that I like to paint is dramatic. It's a little bit, um, I, I hope you agree, I don't know, maybe you will, but slightly cinematic. I like the sort of grandeur and you know big sweeping shots of bits of landscape so that's what I'm after so I'm going to zoom back again now so you can see a bit more um, I'm really going to try in this video to um, apart from stay out of the way I'm going to whoops hang on a minute I'm going to try to actually show you the bit that I'm talking about and not go off on a tangent somewhere, you know, and put my shoulder over it. Oop. I could cut this out. If I didn't cut it out, I hope it isn't too disturbing for you. There we go. Right. There we go. Uh, so you can see everything. That's good. So there's quite a lot of this to cover uh, and I'm going to do it really quickly. So we're going to just get a load of white and quite, I mean, that is quite a lot of white. And just sort of shovel it along here. Off we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so pole dark. Have a look at pole dark. Have a look at the type of landscape. And, uh, you know, this will probably give you the same sort of feeling. Um, it's a very uh, Cornwall and Devon. Devon is the county in England next to Cornwall. Um, uh, this is the sort of dramatic landscape that you get down there. It's a little sort of moorland right up to the sea, and it's fascinating. It really is nice. In fact, every time I go to England, uh, I haven't been for a long time, of course, what with the lockdown and uh, not being too well, but I will get back one day, I hope. Uh, I always go to Cornwall because it sort of feeds me. It gives me a, it gives me a lot of um, inspiration. And I have, I have uh, relatives in a place called Tavistock. So there we are, there's the brown with white. So I've got the white up against the, um, the land. And there's always a reason for that. You never, you never leave it um, so that it's just, you know, as I've done it. You have to pull the two together. They, they need to mingle, and that will give us perspective. And I'll, we'll do some mingling in a minute. I'm not quite ready to mingle. Am I being a good boy and keeping out of the way? Sort of. OK. So um, along here, back and forth, it's not complicated. Uh, the other thing I should say is I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I do sound sarcastic sometimes, I think, but anyway. Um, it's just that it is that easy. All I'm doing is what you're seeing I'm doing, and that's back and forth like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. This isn't finished yet. This darker brown stuff, that's going to have a bit of work done on it. And in fact, I'm going to put some, um, some of this cadmium yellow into it. Let's have a bit there. And then we'll just sort of push it around. We'll get back to brushwork in a minute, but at the moment I'm just sort of building this, I hope, slightly interesting bit of sky. It could be a sunset or a sunrise. Now, if you like sunrises, sometimes I think that that's um, 
what is it? People who paint just sunrises, I think. Now, I, I could be wrong. I, I heard somewhere that they tend to be happyish people. And people who paint sunsets usually have a little bit of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for with a certain amount of tact? It's not so happy. It's a little bit depressing in a way, but uh, maybe not. It could be complete rubbish, I think. I quite often look at sunsets and I think, wow, that's cool. And um, to tell you the truth, I don't remember when I last saw a sunrise now. Who wants to get up that early? I mean, it's nice when the weather's warm, but, you know, it's not... Uh, it's suddenly, funnily enough, in, in France here, it's suddenly gone quite cool after one of the hottest summers I've ever experienced. Anyway, right now, so I've put that on there. I'm just going to let it sit for a bit and uh, just give my hands a quick wipe. And then I'm going to start working on the sky above it. So perhaps... I will just adjust, just adjust is not the easiest thing to say, the camera a touch so that we get a little bit more of the top. So you can see what I'm going to be doing right up to the edge. There we go. Okay, right, I think the camera's locked. I hope so. What you don't want is the camera suddenly um, pointing down slowly as you're working. Anything you can possibly think of that could go wrong with this camera has happened to me at some stage. Now, so I got, I got this new brush and I put brown on it. Okay, so I'm going to use... Am I? Yeah, I am. I'm going to use the same brush. All I'm going to do is give it a wipe. And then I'm going to use this to mix with the blue to chuck up there, ready for the um, the sky. So this, I'm, I'm not worried about over there at the moment, I'll be going there in a minute. Oh no, in fact, should I? Wait a minute. Let's just stop there. Get your brain in gear, Davis. Let's try something else. Right. What I want to do over there is a little bit of this. So... Um, Right, OK, I'm going to move the camera again. Sorry about this. Uh, but um, you don't want me getting in the way, so I'm going to just turn that and zoom in right over there. There we go. Now, I'm not going to do anything particularly magical there. Uh, all I'm going to do is just sort of put a bit of white on the top of the cliff, and uh, you'll see the magical effect that will be magical that's the magical bit the effect of building some distant mountains okay so a quick look behind me right so just a load of white here i could use a brush but uh, i'm sort of into palette knives at the moment <clears throat> so this white paint is going to go right down to the to the uh, to the green like so you can't see much because it's white on white there. But uh, you'll see what happens in a moment. OK, I think that's looking pretty good. OK, right. So there's the whitest white on white, which means you can't see it. Now, I'm going to push some of that into this uh, brown. Well, it's a, it is brown, but it's... Um, it's, it's leaning towards orange. It's an interesting colour, I think. In fact, red ochre is one of the most versatile colours you can use. And if you don't add it to your greens, it, the greens don't look right. Worth remembering that. Don't have to go over the top with it. Just a little bit in the green. Makes the green look more natural. Okay, so there we go. Interesting cloud shapes there, which are all appearing uh, by accident. You can see some of them, I think. Yeah. Right. A bit 
more pushing just to get some lumps off. Okay, now then, this is fun. And it's going to get more fun. That white that I've put there is going to have quite a magical effect on the green that I've got on this brush, which is the one I used to put the green on the paintings. The same, exactly the same colour. So what I want to do over there, I want, I want some distant hills. So I'm just going to sort of start around about here. Just double check that you can see everything. Good. And then I'm just going to sort of paint into the white. Like so. So now, over the back of that cliff, we've got some distant hills. Uh, it, of course, it's made my brush uh, useless now for anything in that area, because it's just gone a little bit too pale. So what I'll do here is get another brush. Again, one that's, in fact, maybe I could use that. Oh, no. OK, so another brush, never been used. Uh, and I want it to be completely colour free. So uh, when I've just made sure that the hairs aren't going to fly out and get stuck on the painting, just give it a quick flick or two. Right, so this brush, I'm going to just sort of smooth that a little bit. Well, not totally smoothing. Um, I don't know what the word is. But anyway, I'm just going to push it up into the sky just a little bit more. So I've got a cleanish edge. Then I'm going to turn the brush around to the side where there's not much paint. That's got paint. This side doesn't have much paint. I'm going to dip that into my green. My green sludge. I'm just going to go on the dark part here, just to make it a little bit crisp, not too crisp, but just a little bit more solid there. So now uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that again later, but that's the beginning of the effect that I'm after. And although I'm going to do something else, I'm going to use the original brush, if I can find a bit that doesn't have too much, too much white on it. So let's just see what I can get away with here. Because I, I don't want the hill to be quite that shape. I want it to have a little bit of a turn in it. By that I mean up with a bit of a, an angle and then down and then across. A few bumps on the top, that's always a good thing. Distant, bumpery. Now then, that's that brush finished with, I think. So onto the sky. Uh, so I'm going to find a um, brush that's got some blue on it. In fact, there's one. Now the blue that was used on the original painting was um, phalo blue. I'm just toying with the idea of using ultramarine, which is one of my favourite blues. Let's just see how phalo blue looks with a bit of a uh, little bit of Payne's grey in it, a little bit of oil, not too much oil. I don't want this to be drippy, so the usual thing: put it put it on the brush, and it mustn't drop off. That's what I'm after. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of experiment uh, over there a little bit with some, some blue. Do I want it that sort of dark? Probably. Yeah, I think I'll use that. Okay, I'm going to do that. So phalo blue, um, for those who are interested, because I do get asked this sometimes, this is phalo blue, this is sort of 
the size tubes that I use, quite big. It's um, is it 400 and something, I don't know. Oh no, no it's not even that big, 150 millilitres. Uh, phthalo blue, uh, some people want to know the P number. Okay, there's a P number, where are we? Which is written on the label there, and uh, it's PB15 uh, colon 3. So I'm sure that means something to some people. It means zero to me. In fact, less than zero. Uh, I have no idea what it's about. But um, I know that someone will tell me. Um, I'm just looking around my palette again for a bit of space because I'm going to need a lot of this. And um, I think I might show you my palette, actually. There we are. So uh, I, I've, I found a bit of space just over here, so I'll use that. So I, I've got a couple of paper palettes on the go. I don't all, always do this, but um, it does actually make cleaning a lot easier because paint sticks to glass very well. And uh, I try to keep that to the minimum because um, if I forget it and leave it, I, then I have to get a pneumatic drill on it to try and get the paint off. So there we are. That's the sort of state of play at the moment. Back to this. Let's um, zoom back. And then we'll start laying into the um, sky. Let me just make sure that I can get that nice and big. Right, off we go then. So uh, a great big lump of phthalo blue. Whoops. You get one whoops with every painting. At least one whoops, anyway. Well, I'm kicking something. Um, I didn't mention at the beginning because I don't know whether people are interested, but the um, I'm using linseed oil and it's refined linseed oil. Makes absolutely no difference to me whether it's refined or not. I'm not interested in its family background. It can be slob oil for all I care. But anyway, this is refined, so it obviously has a good accent. And um, I'm just waffling on here while I get some paint on the, on the palette. Okay, so lots and lots of uh, phthalo blue I mean it's, it's got oil but you know it's not it's not out of control oil let's put it that way okay so what I need to do is just get some of this on here now it will look streaky to start with it always does there's a few lumps in there that just happened to come off my palette. I don't know whether you even saw them. They, they are now stuck to my shoe. It's okay. At least I know where they are. Okay. So, phthalo blue. It's how, the best way to describe it next to um, ultramarine is it's more blue. Ultramarine has a slight red redness about it. Okay, so I'm pushing the paint as far as I can. There are no piles of paint on that, so that when I start to put the white on it, uh, it won't get all bogged up or bogged down. I don't know which is worse, being bogged up or bogged down or bogged sideways. Okay, so this will be interesting when it comes down to meet this colour to see how they actually uh, blend together and I'll show you how to avoid making green because this is uh, sort of you know it's got in theory it's got yellow in it cadmium yellow which looks quite orangey but when they when they mix you've got to be a bit careful you don't want a, a big green bar across the sky and um, we, we won't get that It'll, um, I'll show you so you notice I'm stopping before I get to it That's an ancient Jedi trick. Okay, so there we are. We've got nice, quite a nice blue there. Okay. 
and um, a lot of a lot of area to cover. If you uh, if you're still here, I'm going to put a little reminder on the screen. I won't say anything, but uh, I hope you saw that. One thing I will remind you about, though, I don't always do this because I don't, I, you know, I always found it. Let me put it this way. I have, a, I have a Patreon page and it took me a long time, actually, when I started um, monetizing my videos. I, I, uh, somebody said, oh, why didn't you get a Patreon page? And I looked at it and I thought, well, it's a bit like begging, you know, please send me money. And um, I thought, well, no, I don't, I'm not going to do that. You know, and I resisted and resisted and kept on resisting. Uh, and then I sort of had a little think about it and um, got over the uh, the begging feeling. And I started a Patreon page. However, I don't I don't continually ask people to give me money. Uh, any money that you do give me is it goes towards paint. As I always say when I do talk about it, it goes it goes towards paint and cat food, because. Um, you know, I have a very hungry cat. Um, and also, my working situation has changed. I used to design gazillions of books. I'm not kidding you. I was... I don't know, I think I was possibly the busiest book designer in Europe. Um, over the years working for this one particular publishing company, uh, I've lost count to about 3,000, maybe 3,500 books, which is strange because I went through my entire career as a commercial artist and prior to working for this publishing company, I, um, I only designed two books in my entire life, you know, magazines, uh, brochures, adverts, all that sort of stuff, just two books. One was The Good Wine Guide in... 19 wow you can buy it you know you can buy it on the internet this book the good wine guide by someone called berkman and hall i think it is two guys i think they i think they used to be right wine writers for the times newspaper or something like that i don't know but all i remember from that is they used to turn up at the office after doing a wine tasting and um, they were barely coherent but anyway uh, yeah I designed that book with them and edited it with them in the office and of course they were so drunk uh, it was not easy anyway uh, so I did that one and then I did a book oh, back in the early 70s um, uh, I can't remember the title of that one actually And, um, yeah, so I thought, you know, I thought, well, I'll probably never be a book designer. Then I come to France and someone introduced me to the publisher of this company. And um, that was it. Non-stop, 17 years, sometimes a book a day. Paperback books, you know, no, no, no great design. All you had to do is work out a theme that ran through the whole lot of them. There we are, there's some blue, and then just sort of churn them out. And uh, anyway, they decided to, um, the company was sold, all, all the books have gone off to India. And um, there we are, that's fine, you know, everything comes to an end. But it changed my, um, my uh, you know, affected my income big time. And uh, so, yeah, patron, it's sort of useful. Well, it's very useful, actually, and I and I do appreciate when people do donate. It's um, you know it's it's li it's been life changing. It's like uh, you know, well you know, I think everyone knows nowadays. Everyone's short a dosh. So I I don't I don't beg people for money. I let them know that I greatly appreciate it if they donate. If you don't, it doesn't matter. One of the one of the upsides, I suppose. Well, I hope it is. If you do donate and uh, you want to come to one of my Zoom classes 
depending on what you donate, you either get an awful lot, you know, a big reduction, or you just don't pay anything. You just get you get in there because you're a patron. So something to think about anyway. But like I said, if you don't if you don't donate, um, I will find out where you live. No, I, I, I won't hold it against you. Right, so back to this, far more interesting. We've got our Stark landscape and we've got whoops, the guts of the uh, sky down. Excuse all this paper tearing, it's like some kind of in insane origami. Um, okay, now all I'm going to do, because we've got uh, a certain amount of paint up here, it's not vast, it's not deep paint, okay? I think I made that reasonably clear. It's um, quite thin. Now, if I apply a bit of paper like so, you see, we start to get light bits. I hope that shows up on the... Yes, it does. Okay, so if I continue to do that, I will use these light spots to put white paint on with a palette knife. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because when I put paint on the lighter bits, like that and that, and then I start pushing it around, it won't get um, zapped by the strong blue. It'll, it'll obviously have uh, a bit of an effect, but it won't wipe out the white. It'll all become clear in a moment. Now, and down here, where these two colors start to meet, okay, I'll take some of the blue away and let it just touch the top edge of this color here. So hopefully we won't get too much green effect. So it's very, very thin paint there. And then sometimes I'm pushing the browny, orangey color up. Sometimes I'm turning the paper a bit, pushing the blue down. Okay, so where they join, it's going to get a little bit sort of um, a little bit vague, which is what we want. So I'll just carry on doing that for a minute. There are times when I just want to put a bit of music in and stand here and paint away, but uh, when it. I, I find all this um, stuff about copyright quite difficult to organise. You know, there are times when I think, How, well, where do I get the copyright for a certain bit of music? And I'm, quite frankly, I haven't got the time to go looking or the desire, funnily enough. So the, my only alternative is to use um, YouTube's free music. So you can go into the uh, YouTube library, choose a bit of music, and then, you know, add it to your video at the editing phase. And you don't have to worry about copyright, because it's free. It's like uh, a few months ago, I chose a bit of music, and it's the music that you heard at the beginning of this video. Just, I just happen to like it. You know, I go through phases where I like it, and sometimes I think, well, that's enough of that, let's put something else on, you know. Um, anyway, I like that bit of music, it's slightly mysterious, it go, definitely goes with this sort of uh, landscape. Anyway, I got, I paid for this bit of music, and uh, which meant that I could use it and put it on a video which is monetized, etc, etc. And I put a credit up as well, which uh, you'll find at the end of this video, and also in the info box below. Uh, I don't know how it works, but YouTube, it, when you upload a video, your video goes through checks. They, they do all kinds of stuff, and it probably, it's all probably done with artificial intelligence, I think. Don't really know. I, I'm sure there, are, there can't be millions of people checking it and listening to every bit of music. Anyway, it picked up this bit of music, I suppose, didn't recognise it. And then um, I got a a message from YouTube saying you cannot monetize this video because this bit of music. I then had to get in touch with the people that I'd paid for the music and um, ask them to clear it with YouTube. And of course nothing was instant. You know. 
So I had to wait until that happened. Eventually it got sorted. But anyway, the easiest thing to do is just choose the free music. But I have to say, a lot of the free music is... It isn't free for nothing. Let's put it that way. Some of it is absolutely dreadful. I don't, I don't want... Um, I don't want hard rock playing. I think some people come here for a little bit of peace and quiet. Or maybe a bit of calmness at least. Let me just move the camera slightly. Okay. Yeah, I think people want a little bit of calm. So I don't want... I don't want to frighten people. <laughs> a little bit of calm in the stress of the world. Right, okay. So over here, we're still blending away. I quite like the colour that it's making between the two. I was worried it might be quite green. It's got a slight green tinge to it, but it's nothing too disturbing. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the music, you've got to be, got to be careful. There's, um, yeah, so if I wanted to not talk, I know people seem to like to know what's going on, so they, they don't mind me talking. Um, but, there, you know, I do get the odd person that would just like me to shut up. <laughs> OK, this is sort of coming together. I don't know how long I've been doing this. Uh, my camera... I don't know how much I can get on the disc. I know it's a, it's a seriously big disc I've got in the camera, so it's um, probably take an hour and a half, maybe. And of course, I have to keep looking at the camera because what I don't want is a little icon to appear about here that says disc full because who knows how much I've lost. Anyway, it's doing okay at the moment. Right. So yeah, these, this colour is quite interesting, and I, as you can see, I'm just I'm taking some paint away every now and then, like so, so that I can add a bit of white to it. That's looking quite nice, actually. In fact, I'm quite I'm pleased I didn't use ultramarine. I think this one's adequate. Right. So now that I've got that, there is a there's something not right here. You can see the edge of a palette knife has left a line there, but that's that's nothing to worry about. Whenever you get things like that happen in a painting, supposing you're going to copy this, right? If you get that, don't panic. Just leave it. Don't rush in there to fix it. It can be fixed at any time, OK? Choose your moment. If you've got your mind on other things, do the other things and come back to it when, you, when you're ready. Right, so now you saw what I was doing over there on the right. I'm going to zoom back again and move the camera over. I think you can see most of it. And let's move up a bit so you can definitely see all the top. There we go. OK, right. Time to get some white on there. However, before I, before I get the white on there, I'm just going to do something. Uh, because I, because I, like, I just like the... Um, you know, as much as I like painting clouds, I also like the uh, experience, I suppose, of making marks in the landscape as I go, because it sort of, you know, it all enriches it as you work through the painting. And I've got a, there's a sort of hint of a line there. Can you see it when I look in the camera? You can see some of it, yeah. There's a little bit of light here and there. And I quite like that. So I th I'm thinking to myself, Let's just sort of bring them out a little bit. Just extend it a bit along there so, you know, there's a, there's a path. There's also my shoulder. There. Notice not too much cat hair at the moment. Now, let's see, what else are we going to do on that? Yeah, it's a nice, nice bit of path. 
Okay, palette knife. So I've got some lumps of paint here, just there. Can you see that? I think you can. Maybe you can't, but you'll see it all later anyway. I'm just going to sort of push that a bit because I don't want a lump of paint there. I'm not worried about the um, green in the sky down there at the moment because that's all, all the sort of thing that uh, you can go back to even when the picture's dry. You can go back and sort out that. Okay, so if, you, if that little step shape is worrying you, uh, getting rid of it is just this easy. Steady hand is always good. My hand is not always steady. But I always make contact with the paint as I breathe out. Because it, it uh, steadies you. For some reason. Okay. So that's looking quite nice. I'm quite pleased with that. What I want to do before I get really up into the sky here, I want to do something with this line uh, and soften it a little bit. This can be this can be crisp because this is actually not that far away from us. But over here, some of it is near to us, but some of it is distant. So I think I'm going to, um, this, the most important thing to do is get the paint off my hand. It's an ongoing battle. The older I get, the more untidy I get. <laughs> now, I've just seen something there that I don't like. A bit of glue dropping down too low. Okay, that's good. Now then, um, so that edge, what are we, how are we going to do that edge? Okay, I've got this um, hardly used brush. Um, it's got a, a hint of some green and some white on it, but uh, I don't really want it. I, I'm going to use the white, uh, the, the pig pardon, I'm going to use the green that is here. I don't want any help from what's already on the brush, if that makes sense. So here we go. All I'm going to do along the edge, a little bit of scumbling, a little bit of back and foring. I always say that, back and forth. Do you know, I've spent years trying to say forth, back and forth. It's not back and forth. Okay, so there we go. It's, it's pulling the sky and the landscape together and it's giving us a little bit of distance. So first stage is to work along it and just give it a slightly fuzzy, blurred look. So I'm going to zoom in there, show you what I'm talking about. OK, so uh, uh, you can probably see that's slightly fuzzy and there are some accidental shapes. My goodness, they're really small. Hang on, I'm going to go in a bit further. You can probably just about see something there. In other words, there's some dark bits and some light bits right on the horizon. So I'm going to go further uh, into that in that um, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. So I'm going to bring the landscape up a bit over there. Oh yeah, that's cool. A little bit there. Let's, let's have a hint of the hill. We could have a little hill in the background there, no reason why not at all. Okay, and another little something there. Okay, let me just look in the camera, see what you can see. Yeah, see what I mean? Oh, I hope, well, I'm talking to you, but you can't answer. I hope you see what I mean. Uh, it's just, you know, just gives it that extra little bit of distance. And in fact, it comes to, um, where does it come to, to that point? Okay, so I'm going to... Just move you to the left a bit. And let's see if we can uh, 
get the hint of something on the horizon. So let's see, what should we do? We've got, there's something going on here, which, uh, when I finish, I'll go, I'll zoom right across the whole painting, uh, close up. So here, I think I want to put something else. I think we want a little bit of, I don't know what it is, but a little bit of that. And maybe, and maybe the hint of a slightly bigger hill over there. There we go. Probably enough. It's very, very, um, very subtle. But, you know, it just adds a little bit of interest to the painting. Now, I've got to watch this because there's a little bit of white on that edge of the brush. There's less this end. If I kept putting that on there and moving it around, it would all end up a bit flat. So I'm going to just take some of the white off the brush. And then get another brush, or the, the original one that has the dark colour on it. So I've got uh, sap green, not much red ochre, it's just basically sap green. Um, and I want to put, um, I want to put a slightly crisp bit of hill in front of that. Or, or some kind of shape, if you see what I mean. They're probably distant woods, something like that. And of course they're nothing really. They're just shapes. There we go. Who knows what's going on over there? I don't. But if it makes you want to visit, I don't mean me, I mean that part of the landscape, then it's doing a job that's worthwhile. It's getting, it's getting um, attention. Let me just check in the camera that you can see. No, you can't. Quick move again to the right. Okay, so there's a fuzzy hill in the middle there. Okay. It is the hill of fuzziness here. So what I want to do to make it interesting is to put something in front of it that isn't fuzzy. So just a little bit of so solidity to work against it, which will give you the feeling of something happening. There we go. And I, I, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to push it any further than that because it's actually working quite well. So zoom back and then we'll hit the clouds. Okay. Now, a bit of the top. If I haven't cut it, I suppose it doesn't matter really. Some people don't mind. It's a bit, you know, you, you can do all kinds of things with um, the edu editing software, you know, I can do fade ins and fade outs and all kinds of stuff. Um, but you know, maybe you don't want it. Maybe it's okay without that. Some people say it's more like being here. Okay, which brings me to um, yeah, if you do want to come here. Now, I, I've in theory, I've just finished teaching my last student for the year. And that was John the Doctor, and uh, he he produced some uh, nice paintings. Uh, do you see it at the beginning of the video? I'm not sure. I might show you actually. I'll uh, I'll I'll put them on the screen uh, at the end so you can see what he did. But that doesn't mean to say that you need to now flick to the end. It's better if you stay here. It's much better for you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can have a look at his later. And in fact, if you want to see them, just go on to my Facebook page. Anyway, so uh, yeah, he's in theory, he's the last um, student for the year. Um, I wasn't taking on many people because of uh, my health, but uh, you know, I'm much better now. But I might, I might take on maybe one more. Uh, so if you want a book before Christmas, uh, you need to ask me now, not this minute, you know, send me a message. Go to my, go to my website, 
and uh, you can contact me there or send me a message on Facebook. Over there, I just want to do this before I get onto the sky. I've got that sort of fuzzy pale bit there. Let me just check. That's all clear. Good. So all I'm going to do is a few lumps and bumps in front of that, like, like this. Don't do repeat patterns. Keep it random. Anything like that. Keep it as random as... Whoops, that's not good. That's better. Keep it as random as you can. OK, and I'll zoom in on that later and you'll see what happened there. OK, clouds. So, uh, white paint with no oil added and a palette knife. A palette knife or two, in fact. So I've got these great big, this great big long palette knife here, like I said. That's probably going to do it. Like I said, no oil added, just a load of paint. And it's cloud time. Let's have some cloud shapes. So let's just put it up there. See what we get. Good fun, isn't it? Clouds are easy. Right. Now, I, I, um, I don't know whether I was being chastised by someone, but I, somebody said, oh, the clouds are easy for you because you can do it, but not all of us can do it. Well, OK, point taken. Um, but when you look at what I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing something with this palette knife that you can do, and that is just putting paint on it, putting it on there and pushing it around. I have to say, working big is easier than working small. If you can work on a big painting or lots of big paintings, you know, to practice, you will have more success than if you are working on something that's tiny. Because if it's tiny, you've got to be, you've got to be quite slick about what you're doing. You need to have, you know, control, but with this, uh, you know, it's almost out of control. You see what I mean? I'm just sort of pushing the paint around. You try doing it small. In fact, the best thing to do is to do a small picture. Choose something that's like um, 10 centimetres squared. Uh, for um, the people in the US, not everybody's um, knowledgeable with centimetres, you know, they may not make much sense. But 10 centimetres is, is that much. Just that, that bit to the right of my thumb. That's 10 centimetres. So it's really small. Try painting a picture that big, then try painting a picture this big, and uh, all will be explained. It'll all come clear. You'll think, wow, much easier big. And uh, so there we are. And don't repeat cloud shapes. Very important that when you put the paint on the board, I'll just demonstrate what I'm going to say because it will sound silly. Try to lose control a bit. Yeah, sort of give up control. Just sort of do that. Yeah, I'm not exactly in control, am I? I'm sort of going nuts. Well, you know, it's going nuts. And there's going nuts. This is not total nuts. This is just slightly nuts. But the point is, you know, I'm not painting clouds. I'm painting white shapes on blue and whatever that colour is down there. Quite interesting. But uh, there you go. So um, I don't know how you what you you would call that. You'd call it sort of what would you call it? In fact, tell me. Tell me below. Um, I like reading any comments, except for the ones that don't get through, because I do have a filter in place on my um, comments thing. So if you say anything really a bit unpleasant, it won't get through. Um, also, something I will ask people, don't send me links. If you send me a link to your page, it won't appear in the comments. Yeah, uh, you may be able to see it. Nobody else will. Um, and uh, to be honest, I, I just delete messages with links. I can't reply to them when they're in my um, uh, quarantine folder. You don't get that option on, on YouTube. All I can do is delete them. Now, the reason I do this is because um, 
when I upload a video, for some reason, I get absolutely peppered with inappropriate websites. And it's just people who, you know, it's probably, well, it's mostly porn, I think. The reason they do it is because when you first upload a video, or when I do, I get quite a lot of attention. There may be five or 600 people per hour looking at the video. So these porn sites will latch onto that and uh, they want that sudden surge in numbers so that they can get their um, their porn out there, so to speak. Um, anyway, so if anyone sends me a link, uh, it just doesn't go anywhere. It won't, it won't appear on my page. Um, the, the other reason I have uh, that filter in place is because some people just do it to advertise their page. Now that's, you know, that's just not done. That's really bad, what they call bad form. In other words, you're piggybacking off somebody else and it's just inappropriate because, you know, um, YouTubers who have, you know, reasonably successful channels um, didn't really get there by piggybacking off other people. It's uh, you know, you do it by getting your own exposure just through hard work. And um, frankly, you know, I, I'm not an advertising platform for other people. You have to get your own audience. Interesting sky. Now, I'm going to be going over this with a big brush soon. This, this sort of stage is, um, this is just sort of troweling on the paint so that I can... Uh, I can smooth it with the big brush, which will happen in the next minute or so. Just got to keep turning around to check the camera, just make sure my disc isn't full. It tells me that I have may have 55 minutes left, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, don't send me links. Send me nice comments, I'll be nice to you. If I do... Um, have a link on my page is because I found an artist that I want to um, give a little bit of exposure to so you know but not everybody hope that doesn't sound too mean but I'll give you an idea of how how I built my channel up and that is that I, I if you have a YouTube channel okay first of all I can recommend if you if you can get proficient at painting and you can talk to people incessantly. I never thought I could, but apparently I can. Um, so much that I can, I can talk to my wife and she will just look at me and just say, please stop talking. You know? um, and of course I do, I always obey everything she says. Uh, but if you, can get a, if you can get a channel going and you can get people interested it is a source of income. Now, it's never going to be a really big source of income to start with. And uh, the, the way you work it, the way I worked it was this. I had a Facebook page. I had a private page, which is just plain old Stuart Davis. And I have Stuart Davis Artist. So the artist one is sort of linked to YouTube. Whenever anyone likes a painting I put on Stuart Davis Artist in Facebook, I will invite them. Well, first of all, I'll acknowledge the fact that they've done that. Oops, great big hair there. I'll acknowledge the fact they've done it by, you know, clicking on their comment and either putting a heart on it or a like or whatever. Um, and then when I put a painting up, I will always refer it to Facebook so that... Uh, it's, you know, it's advertising. OK, it's turning into a busy sky, this. I didn't want it quite so busy, but I can, I'll be simplifying a little bit in a minute. Anyway, it's hard work. So at the end of every day when I was designing books, I would be going through all the comments that I get on Facebook. I would be going through YouTube and looking at comments and then referring people to my Facebook page. They all work together. 
So if I put something on Facebook, that sends people to YouTube. And occasionally, YouTube sends people to Facebook. Particularly for, um, for information, I suppose. Anyway, that's sort of how it works. But I, I recommend it if you can, you know, it may take you a few years to get a good audience, but ultimately, um, it's, uh, you know, it is a source of revenue. And quite frankly, these days, uh, anything you can get is, is uh, useful. Right. So I'm getting to the point now where, well, first of all, you could leave the sky like that. That's not a bad sky as skies go. However, it's not quite what I want. It's not quite good enough yet. And um, I'm going to push it as far as I can. So over on the right hand side there, in fact, I've got through a, quite a pile of paint here. I'm just going to put a few little wisps going off up into the sky. And as you know, what I'm going to say, they must, all clouds have to go off the edge of your painting. OK, so just a few little shapes there. You, don't, you know, I don't want to go completely mad. I've sort of gone quite mad, but I don't want to go totally insane. And the next thing I'm going to do, clean the palette knife. That's done. That's a good thing about palette knives. You know, you just want one wipe and they're clean. However, before I start working with the big brush, I need some more of this. Now, um, I put a, uh, my first ever reel, if you go on Instagram, there are these things called reels where you can pick up a bit of music. I guess they've sorted the copyrights out for you. And the bit of music that I wanted on my reel was Earth Song. Now, it's not, it's not um, the version with... Michael Jackson singing, it's just the tune, and uh, but it's quite a catchy tune. So I use that, and just a, a picture of the uh, original version of this. And um, yeah, it's just a nice catchy tune. So I put that as my first ever reel. So if you go and look at it, it's very minimalist. I have no idea how, how it works. And I just happened to wake up last night at three o'clock in the morning, couldn't sleep. So I thought, well, let's tax my brain a bit and see if I can make a reel. And it seemed to work. I don't know how many people liked it, but anyway. But it all, you know, it's all part of the um, getting people interested. Promote, promote, promote. You have to keep promoting all the time. I'll be doing a bit of work down there in a minute. Um, not much. I think I might just leave it simple. Thinking out loud now. But maybe I'll draw people to this spot a little bit more. And the way I'll do that will be to get some contrasts just in there. But anyway, this is the fun bit now. Great big sky, all those clouds. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, just bit, so I don't have to tell you again. Mm -hmm. I know I'll keep rep repeating it. The bit of the brush I'm interested in is this bit here, not the tip. It's the side and the side, okay? Both sides. And I skim it, hardly touching it. And every, every now and then, a good wipe. Otherwise, it'll all go completely to rubbish. So, all different directions. Okay, whoa, great big hair there. Gotcha. Now, um, I'll zoom in when I've done this, but you, so you get a close-up of how smooth it becomes. So, after those few swipes, yeah, just push the paint into the paper like so, a few times, don't have to get it all off. Now you will see this wobble a bit because it's such a big bit of board. Normally you wouldn't see it wobble because the touch, the touch on the surface is unbelievably gentle. In fact, I don't even know how I do it sometimes, but you have to just barely touch it. I have to say, I'm painting this today without the cat. Sometimes she's in here watching, sometimes she can't be bothered. 
And um, I think at the moment she can't be bothered because the temperature's dropped and she's gone off in the house to find somewhere warmer. This is a, a very old French house and I'm at one end of it. So the, the wall over, it won't make much sense, but the wall over there uh, is the end of the house. So uh, it's cold. It tends to be the, the chilliest room in the house, I think. And um, I don't really want it to be, oops. I don't want it to be really hot in here because if it is too hot, it makes you sleepy and you think, oh, what am I going to do? Paint a picture or have a snooze? So, you know, I want to paint a picture. I don't particularly want to snooze. So I don't have the heating on. Not yet, anyway. If it gets really... If, oh, that's looking good. If it gets really cold, then I will... Um, I'll put the heating on. Yeah, that's coming along well. I'm liking this. So, um, one thing I will say, I don't... Um, I never push to sell paintings um, because I always thought I always think well I, I actually don't really care I like I like uh, teaching but if you are interested in buying this one I think I might put this one up for sale if you send me a private message on Facebook I'll give you the price and we can all have a laugh and then um, you know take it from there but uh, I know people aren't buying paintings much now. There's other, other things to spend money on that are far more important. But uh, yeah, I'm sort of, I might, uh, this may be up for sale. It is a big picture, I have to say, as you know, I gave you the measurements. I'll, I'll probably put it in inches on the screen now. Let me just waggle my brush so that I tell myself to put it on the screen in inches. Um, I have no idea what it is in inches. I have a I have a ruler, but it's in centimeters. Um, or you can look it up if if I forget. Okay, <laughs> I'll probably put it on the screen. But if I did forget, all you've got to do is put in uh, 120 centimeters. That's the width. 60 centimeters, the depth, and the internet will convert it to inches for you. So there we go. Anyway, uh, so I'm just waffling. Waffling, there's a new word. Waffling and waffling. Waffling away uh, while I just get my brush clean. So I'd be up for selling it. But as I said, you know, send me a message. I'll tell you the price. You can laugh <laughs> and do, do what most people do, and that is go away. Because, you know, uh, uh, I'm not cheap. I don't mean that's, I don't mean sound flippant, but you know, you get uh, interesting thing actually. I'll tell you this: this is interesting. When people, not everybody is aware of this. When you paint a picture, right? You, if you're reasonably good at it, and you can bang something out like this. So, supposing this takes two hours, um, people say, "Oh, hang on a minute! You want how many thousands?" of euros and you only worked for two hours well it's not only two hours because I'll be going back to this to do other things when it's dry there's all kinds of things that you need to do to a painting but it's and I'm not trying to justify myself but it's the um, 50 years of experience that allows you to do it in two hours uh, it's the thousands of pictures you've painted of practice to get to that stage uh, then it's the um, the uh, glazing effects that will go on this. Uh, several glazing effects. So it takes a few months before you actually get to the final point where you varnish the picture. So it's not just what you see now. But having said that, don't get me wrong, I don't mind if nobody buys it because I actually quite like it. Um, I'm very pleased with this. In fact, I'm more than pleased. So if I get to keep it, it's not a problem. <laughs> anyway, let me think, what else am I going to do? What, I'm just going to show you something. Now, I've, I've flattened these clouds down. So I'm just going to zoom in to show you the effect that that has. Uh, and then I'm going to zoom back out again. 
and I'm going to make the clouds bigger here. That'll bring them right up over our heads. Okay, if that makes sense. Now then, so let's have a let's have a close up. You have to bear with me here because I'm going to be zooming in, and then I'll have to refocus. Okay, some nice colours there. Yeah, so if you if you are painting a sky like this, red ochre and cadmium yellow deep gives you that colour, which I, I have to say, I'll just make sure I'm in focus here. Yeah, it's a nice colour. It's more exa it's more orange than the original painting, but uh, it's a nice effect. So if we just go up to look at some clouds, let's find a nice bit of cloudery. One should we have? Um, doesn't really matter, really. It all looks quite nice. Let's say there. So you, that's probably the maximum zoom, I think. So as you can see, it's a nice soft finish to the clouds without spending hours and hours and hours, um, you know, blending all the, all the separate clouds together. It's done with a few swipes. There we are. That's a lot of cloud, actually. Let's go right. Up. In fact, let's go along the horizon, and then we'll go back to the um, down through the sky. So there's the horizon. Let me just set the camera there. Check the focus. Okay, and then I'm just going to move. It's on a swivel, so I'll just move across. So you've got all that slightly nice, mysterious stuff going along the horizon there. You could stick a windmill over there or something. I'm not going to, but you could. So eventually we're going to come to the um, the actual cliff thing, which is just appearing there. There's the cliff. And you can see the, in, the, in the bottom edge of the sky there, it's still a bit of green showing through, but actually I don't really care about that. That's quite nice. And then the cliff, I'm going to work on that a little bit. And then along the top, it looks like that until we come to these distant hills, which has got a little bit of mist below them, sort of like so. OK, so I'm going to zoom back so you get to see some of the non-detail. So let's do a little bit of, um, in fact, I'll finish the clouds and then I'm going to go back to the cliff and then that will probably be it. And I'm hoping that um, I won't get a disk full message. So if I do, I'll hopefully spot it. There we go. Now, so when I, when I was talking about the, the clouds, uh, making them wider at the top, um, this is how we do it. Right, so as usual, titanium white. It's the only white I use. Lots of reasons why. The main one, because it's in the shops and flake white has lead in it, so it's probably good to keep away from that. And also, um, if you want to use flake white, then I'm not sure, but I did read somewhere that you have to get permission. Which is a little bit, I don't know. Is that ridiculous? What do you think? I think it's slightly ridiculous. Because it's not as if it's, um, when it's dry, I don't think it does anything that's uh, risky to the health. The thing is not to eat it. OK, just uh, sorry about the shudder on the camera there. Now, what I'm going to do here, just to get the clouds to look as though they are really coming over our heads, is add a bit of emphasis at the top there and make them wider. So in other words, it's, it's um, sky perspective. So they're going to start to splay out, and this one is going to splay out a little bit more too. And I think that will be probably it. I'm slightly phased by the fact that my disc apparently is never going to fill up. It's a big disc anyway, let's not go on about that. Right, so a little bit more white there. This is just a little bit of an optical trick. You know, the land, things on the land get bigger as they get closer to you. Uh, as a cloud comes over your head, it gets bigger. It becomes inbiggened. And I think I'm going to connect that through there, like so. 
and a little bit over there. Just a bit of, maybe just a bit of strength to it. By strength, I mean a, a bit more white. And let's just see how that looks. That's yeah, coming along quite nicely. So every time I do that now, you see this is absolutely covered in blue paint. So I've got to keep wiping it. If you don't wipe it, you'll get, um, you'll, you'll lose your contrast. So you see there, I'll put that white there and that's, that's now blue, so that's no good. Unless I wanted to put a pale cloud, say down here, I could put a hint of something there because, you know, it's still lighter than that. And if you have clouds of various varying strengths, that will also give you the feeling of depth. OK, so I think that's that. Um, let's give that another quick wipe. Now, just to, um, as I'm going to be winding up soon, not quite yet, you know when I'm really winding up, because you'll hear faint music in the background, which will gradually get louder, and that usually means there's about three minutes left. So until you hear that music, I'm not going anywhere. And if you are still here, I'm, I'm very impressed. I know some of you are, but uh, if you're not, never mind. You've gone, so you can't hear me. Right, so again, up here, a few little bits of blending. Not much at all, because I want to keep some of the white uh, strength showing through. OK, now I'm touching it a little bit too hard there because of, uh, what, what do they call it, um, clumsiness. So it doesn't matter. Even, even a bit of clumsiness is fixable. So let's just give that again another wipe. Now, always remember when you're doing this, you know, there may be some lines that you've made, but if you go the opposite way, like so, you can usually, um, you can usually numb them down a bit. That's not too bad. A few lines there, but I'm going to live with it. Uh, yeah, actually, that's good. That's very good. Now, oh, there's some here that won't go away, but, you know, just sort of flick over them a few times. They'll go eventually. Don't you, and you don't have to be perfect or something like that, you know. Okay, so interesting sky. Very interesting. Not exactly what I was planning. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to do down the bottom here, because I've got it quite blurry. Let me just check there. It's a little bit blurry there. You've got blue and then the colour and the hill. And here you've got like, like a patch of this brown. So what I think I want to do, I want to bring some white into that. What do I do with it? Um, oh, there it is. OK, so back to the palette knife. All I'm going to do, just to sort of soften the blow a bit there, it's just a few of these here, like so. It just takes a second. I hope that's having an effect. It is good. So I'll do a little bit more, and then I'll come back to this again, but not with the big swipey swishy stuff. It'll be slightly different, and um, I'm sure you can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see that. OK, now, so yeah, back and forth a bit. Ah, I remember to say fourth instead of four. That's good. Along here, just a few sort of low-lying clouds. da de da de da And then I think... Then back to the cliff. Yeah, that's good. That's softened it just a touch. It'll be softer in a minute. Right, that's that finished with. So, um, my goodness, I've got some cleaning up to do in here. Right, so here, now you can use the same, well, it is the same brush. Um, uh, but you, this is the time when you use the tip. Use the side and the tip, in fact. So let's get as much of the blue off as possible. 
Okay, that's one sweep. Most of it, of course, is going on here, but there you go. Um, right, so with something like that, where they've got long clouds, sometimes I do this. I don't always do it, and that is to move that way, but I'm using the tip. And just do that a few times. Not much, hardly any touching, because I don't want to lose some of the contrast. Once you're, red, once you're happy with it, and I am as happy as I'm going to be, I think, then the broad side in one go, like so. And I think that's that. OK, so these clouds are all up here. They're going to stay like that now until the next sitting. Have a quick look at the computer, the computer, the um, camera. It says I've got 30 minutes left. 42% battery. I can plug it in easily, it's not a problem, but I'm just a little bit fascinated in the um, amount of info that's going on my disk today. But, uh, oh, that's good. Right, I'm going to just soften that bit there. There's some bits in there I'm not liking that much. So let's just knock that down a bit. That's better. OK, now, very, very quick bit of cliff work. And there's two approaches. I could use this. Whoops, get it in front of the camera. This square-ended palette knife. Uh, or I can use an ordinary palette knife. Or I could use a brush. Or I can use paper. I can use... I mean... Good heavens, the world is my oyster. So I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see what I'm going to do. I'm even going to move the camera. In fact, I'm going to zoom right in. Well, not right in, but writer in. <laughs> OK, so there we go. There's the cliff. Now, what I, what I wanted to do is I've got these lines to describe the structure of the cliff and that's all very well that sort of works up to a point it's not bad but some of the marks are just sort of ending down here a bit limp and I don't want that and the other thing I want oops I almost cut my throat with my palette knife on. right the other thing I want is uh, a piece of paper, like this, and I just want to bring out the edge in a couple of places there. Let's have another bit of light just here, and it comes right down to the ground. I don't know what it does over there, but it comes down to the ground. Okay, that's good. And these things that end, they're ending a little bit disorganised, so I'm going to pull them down a bit so that they look as though they've got some kind of structure. And then also I'm going to put some light shapes because, you know, who knows what they are. They could be bits of rock or they could be bushes uh, against the cliff because I'm trying to give the feeling of, you know, monument, well, quite monumental size. And I think that will help it. Just a bit of texture, small texture. There's still a little bit of a step in the sky there. And I can fix that again quite easily, palette knife, and just sort of smudge it a bit. There we go, that's good. Uh, like I said earlier, this sort of slight green in the um, sky, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Again, that's very fixable. Uh, the only thing, this is just an experiment, this thing. Um, I use this on chalk cliffs. I think I could probably do something in there just to sort of I don't know what I was going to finish that sentence with but I'm just sort of doing it anyway. You know it's uh, it's just texture really. And how visible is that? That's sort of okay. Yep yeah, I think I'm going to leave that Right, it's, yeah, I don't, oh, actually, you know, curiosity, I think I was a cat once, in a previous life, I was a cat, curiosity, killed the cat, 
I'm just going to get that hair off. Amazing how these giant bristles. You probably can't see it. No, you can't see it. I can see it. It's like a girder. Uh, but maybe I'll, I'll come back to it afterwards, because if you can't see it, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Um, what I want to do is just little things like this. Now, when I move back and look at those, you see they're tiny, which is what I want. I want them to be small because I want the viewer to think this is massive. Let's just try something else here. Oh, yeah. That's good. And then I'm going to go back to some tiny little shapes along the bottom in a moment. Um, I'm slightly annoyed with the girder though. In fact, I'm going to take this girder off if I can find it again. I think it's there. There it is. And it, there it still is. Good heavens. You know, when they, when they decide they're going to stay on the painting, there's not a lot you can do other than get in there. There we go, gotcha. And it doesn't really matter, you see, that it hasn't actually done anything to the paint, it still looks okay. Now, um, yeah, down here, what should we do? Let me just have a little think. Let's get a bit of paint there. Just move it slightly. Yeah, I'm going to do some of these pale blob things because they're quite effective. And then I'm stopping. So before I finally go away, um, if you want to go to my one of my or all of my Zoom classes, either be a patron, big one, you know, shed loads of money, <laughs> or um, you know, just. Uh, Look out for my adverts that I put on Facebook. Uh, you know, I have two a month. It's always a Saturday. It's always at 4 p.m. French time, which is Greenwich Mean Time plus one. We're an hour ahead of England. Um, and I think on average, it's, France is like five hours ahead of the east coast of America. Something like that. So 4 p.m. my time, I suppose. Um, is late late morning in the US, depending on where you are in the US. But that's your fault for having such a big country. Um, but most of the people, funnily enough, most of the people will come to the class. Some, one or two English people, uh, but mostly Americans. And we have a really good time. It's quite a nice nice uh, atmosphere, good chat afterwards. The chatting goes on for, I think the record is three hours, maybe a bit more. So it's like, I don't paint for an hour and then tell you all to clear off. It's, um, you know, I answer questions and uh, it's turned into a bit of a painting club and followed up by nice chat. It's good. It really is good. I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, it's a bit of a mystery tour in, a, in as much as sometimes I don't know what I'm going to paint. Usually um, I try to get an idea, but you know, there, are, there have been times when I have no idea what I'm going to do. And uh, we just sort of see how it goes. Okay, so there we are, Pole Dark's Path. Maybe I'll call it Pole Dark's Path. And uh, can you see what I'm doing? No, you can't. <clears throat> Over this side here, if I just point down a bit and zoom back. I don't want to go back too far because I want you to see what's going on. Right, there we go. Focus. Okay, so there, there's um, a little bit of land. What do we want to do? We want this path that's here. You can actually see that roughly, yeah, I think so. There's a sort of path there. Let's just sort of bring it along a little bit more. There we are, off it goes. There's the path, Poldark's path. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I think I'm about done. I don't know whether I've made 
two hours, uh, but who knows. But the, uh, so I've got to sit down for the next seven hours editing this now. It does take a long time because I've got to just sort of check through stuff as I go. Um, remember to cut the bits that I decided I would cut. Zoom back now. So you can see clearly what, what a mess I have made. Here we go. Okay, there we are, there's the whole thing. And uh, as I was saying, if you want to come to classes, um, contact me through Facebook or go to my website, the link will be below. There's also a link, uh, there will be a link there for you to go and get information on how to get here and have lessons actually in person with me, if you can bear the thought. And uh, what else, anything else you want to know, please ask. So thanks for being here and see you next time. Bye for now.